tricky game. Fulham plus 196. Villa plus 127. Villa are huffing and puffing, but not quite the Villa we saw uh, maybe even as recent as six or seven weeks ago. Draw plus 271. The under over is set at three, but I think it's a minimum of three goals here, and it's plus 103. Mark O'Hare, this just looks like a both teams to score an over. Are you brave enough to take the uh, the dog? Because I tell you what, Fulham, they're no pushover at home. I agree. I'm going to take the underdog here because I think Fulham have been underrated and I think Aston yeah. Villa have been overrated um, for a few reasons, really. Um, I think I have sounded the alarm on Aston Villa on the last few weeks of the show and haven't really kind of gotten involved too heavily Um You know, I I steered clear of the Sheffield United demolition when you boys were well on them uh, because I was concerned about their recent performances. And that has been the kind of um, the one single kind of standout performance they put in really since they turned over City and Arsenal, which have been their sort of huge highlights this season. They were running pretty hot early season. uh, But if you look at their record since those two big wins, they struggled, really struggled to get four points at home against Burnley and Sheffield United. They've been knocked out of the FA Cup really limply at home to Chelsea. Had those two defeats to Man United where they defended pretty poorly. Um, Appreciate they they were probably the better team last weekend and didn't get a result. But um, conceded lots of chances and then were totally outplayed at home by Newcastle not long ago. Pretty dull and lifeless in that nil-nil draw at Everton. Even before those big wins, they were the win at Brentford was unconvincing. They were lucky to pick up a point away at Bournemouth too. So, you know, I think it's been a while since they've kind of really rocked the boat and... um, Injuries have now started to bite in key areas. We knew Konsa was out. Um, he's been playing really well defensively. But now this week, they've lost Bubakar Kamara and Diego Carlos. And um, that means John McGinn's role will differ. He'll have to drop a bit deeper. Defensively, they'll need a reshuffle. But Kamara, I just think, is such a big blow. He is the understated star, I believe, of Aston Villa's season in the sort of destroyer role in midfield. Without him, Villa have really struggled. Small sample alert, but in the four Premier League games he's missed, they've conceded eight goals. Three of those goals came in two home matches against Burnley and Sheffield United, where Villa were awful. Um, Now, there were elements of the performance against Man United which looked good last week. Um, Don't want to criticise them too heavily for that. But now with kind of key players missing, the longer-term downturn, I think they're vulnerable this weekend. And I'm happy to have a crack at that price on Fulham who have won six of the last nine at home. They scored three goals or more in five of those six wins. Only six teams have won more often at home than Fulham this season. And I think going forward now, um, you know, they've signed Brogia on loan. Rodrigo Miniz showed last week his, his physicality, his pace, Willian's creativity from, from that right-hand side. And they've also crucially got Bassi and Awobi back from international duty and Adarabayo back from injury too. So health, they're, they're pretty healthy selection-wise. They've got a number of players back available again they will be stronger I just think Fulham at home you know you can normally rely on them to put in a decent performance it's away from home you want to fade them quite often but um, it wasn't that long ago they beat Arsenal and beat Arsenal quite convincingly at the cottage Mm -hmm. so I think plus 196 they're on the home win I'm happy to have a crack at that I bet you are. I bet you are. And both teams to score and over could be done within like 35 minutes of this game. OK, scouting report on Aston Villa because we've been uh, obviously on them or around them all season long. They've started taking one and two touches more than they were before. They've been too deliberate. There's not enough creativity. And when they are creating, it's falling to the players that are coming in for the injured or suspended individuals that you'd want them to fall to. Um, so all of a sudden, Villa are doing great. Great until the final uh, parts where you want it finished off and then not finishing it off. Fulham, they keep the ball, Brad. They score goals. The plus 120 for them to score two could well be a bet and then run away. Before you go into it, uh, I'm off the Villa train for a while, says George. Foxy says that Fulham, they perform well one week and perform badly the next. Both, good or bad, goals are involved. Yeah, um, I think the uh, to expand on they they perform well one week and, and perform poorly the other. They pretty much played home and away, home and away, home and away since December, um, which makes sense, right? They've seen success at home um, and played poorly away. I think they've they've alternated every match um, since the beginning of December, home and away, which makes sense. Um, I for this match was a tricky one for me because. Aston Villa finishing has been pretty tough. 
Um, and then when they're finishing, it's goals that are either A, on the break, where Ollie Watkins is just a simple layup to him or he's passing it to someone, uh, basically a tap-in, or they're world-class goals, um, John McGinn in the top right corner, something like that, right? It's, it, when they're... When goals, when shots should have high XG opportunities, they're not finishing those chances. It's um, it's funny too because they kind of pan to Unai Emery, um, and every time that shot's missed, when there's one or two extra touches, and when they should have probably taken it first time, they pan to him, and he just looks kind of like blank. Like this is not that you're not you know first starting, you're not kindergarten primary school uh, footballers, you're world class footballers. You should be finishing a lot of these chances. And then Fulham, um, I was going to play it a little different. I was going to play draw no bet, um, but it was around minus one forty three um, to expand on what Marco Harris said. And he said six out of nine or something like that, seven out of nine wins at home. Um, one of those non was one of those was a was a draw against Everton, which would have made draw no bet even more likely. Um, this is a good Fulham side at home. Um, if you look at Aston Villa, especially they're on a downward spiral, but home and away has been gross too, conceding upwards of 1.6 goals per contest away, which is uh, kind of gross compared to that one goal conceded at home. And they're scoring a lot less, possessing the ball a lot less. If Fulham are going to keep possession of the ball, and this is an Aston Villa side who has to find a goal, I don't think they're going to have the creativity to go find two goals to win this. Um, it could They could score two, and what I mean to find two to win this is if they hold uh, Fulham to one, I don't think they're going to get a second to go ahead. I passed, um, but it makes total sense why you'd want anything Fulham on this one. And also, I would uh, advise anybody who's interested in the prop market to find a two-way market on John McGinn. Uh, now he's in the, the negative numbers for shots. Um, where it's a minus sign in front of that, that's when you play um, under two and a half shots for plus money um, as opposed to over two and a half shots for minus money. Yeah, and you just couple that up with he's going to play deeper. He's also going to play against a midfield that will sit in front of him and not give him that 20, 30 yards to be bombing forward because the one thing about Fulham is they do move the ball quickly and if you leave that back door open, in other words, you, you're on sentry duty and you go wandering... There's a big hole to exploit. Let's have a little look at the official pick. There it is, Fulham money line plus 196. Love that. Uh, and uh, Fulham, just to score twice in the game, is plus 120. Uh, but I left it alone. Brad left it alone. As well. 